we're going to start crawling through this diagram that walks through the OAuth flow. Now, again, I really do not expect you to listen to me in this video and comprehend every last step. I just want you to have a very general idea of what's going on. And then as we start to implement the actual flow, we will reference this diagram many different times and say, you know, kind of say, hey, here's the part we are working on at present. OK, so let's go through this diagram. I'm going to zoom in and we'll get started. Now you'll see three different columns on here, client, server, and Google. The everything inside of this client column is essentially steps or actions that are being initiated or kind of undertaken by our client, which is re really referring to our user and their browser. So it's our user clicking around, doing something inside of this column over here. Next is the server column. This is all the logic that you and I are going to put together. This represents our server, our running express server. Finally is the Google column. This represents Google, like the entire entity and their servers that are going to aid inside of the OAuth process. Now, one last thing before we start to go through this flow, remember that the entire purpose of this OAuth stuff is authenticating our users. So being able to identify who is logging in to our application. Remember that we are creating surveys here. That's the entire point of this application. We are allowing our users to create surveys and pay money to us and all that kind of stuff. And so we definitely want to understand who is creating what survey, right? That totally makes sense. And so whenever a user does something inside of our application, we need to be able to identify who is doing it. And so that's why we need authentication. OK, we will talk about just kind of like the ideas behind authentication in general later on. But for right now, let's just concentrate on this flow. So we start up here at the very top left, where a user clicks on some button inside of our application, so presumably like in the browser, that says log in with Google. Whenever that happens, we are going to redirect our user or direct them to a route of something like localhost colon 5000 slash auth slash Google. Now, first off, remember that localhost 5000 is the current address that we are using to host our server. Remember, so here's localhost 5000. That's what's hosting our server right now. Now, the route that they're going to be accessing is auth slash Google. There is nothing inherently important about that route name. I'm just kind of arbitrarily deciding and saying, if anyone goes to the route auth slash Google on our server, that means that they probably want to go into our OAuth flow. So whenever we receive that user, our server is going to say, oh, someone is trying to authenticate through Google with our application. OK, that's fantastic. We take that request, that incoming request, and we immediately forward it on to Google. So we see that incoming request. We say, OK, hey, user, we understand you want to OAuth. No problem. We're going to help you out with that. But first, you need to go over to Google servers and make sure that you grant our application permission to read about your profile on Google. So we redirect the user to google.com slash auth. And then we also specify an app ID. And that app ID is something important and something we'll talk about later on. Now, when we send the user on to Google, Google will then show them some permission page. And it's going to be something that says like, hey, this application wants to have access to your profile or your email. If you've ever signed in with Google before or Facebook or GitHub or anything like that, I guarantee you you've seen this message in the past. So it's some page that says, hey, this application wants to access your profile. Do you allow that? Like, is that OK? And then in theory, the user will say, yep, it's cool. I grant them permission. So the user will see that message in their browser. They will click the button that says, I grant permission to this person. It's cool. When that happens, and this is where things start to get a little bit hairy, OK, so bear with me here. So when the user clicks on the button that says, yep, everything looks good, Google automatically redirects the user back over to an address of localhost 5000 slash auth slash Google slash callback. Now, the route on there of auth Google callback, again, that is just random. That's off the top of my head. The route is not inherently important. I'm just telling you that is the route that we're going to be use in our application. It could easily be something else if we wanted it to. Totally fine. What's a little bit more relevant about that URL, though, is that inside of the query string, so everything after the little question mark in there, there's going to be a parameter of code. 
okay, code. Now that code is really important to us. When the user is redirected back to our application from Google, Google is putting that code inside the URL. We are going to see that request coming in, we're gonna put the user on hold, and then we're gonna take that little code. We're then going to use that code to make a follow-up request from our server directly over to Google, and we're going to include the code in that request. The code is important because that is what allows you and me, like us, our server, to reach back out to Google and say, hey, we're pretty sure this user who's like pending on our server right now, we're pretty sure they just granted us permission and you just gave us this code. So we want to exchange this code with some details about this user. Like, give us their email, give us their profile, give us their identifying information. So Google is gonna take that code, they're gonna say, okay, yeah, this looks legit. This looks like the one that we just gave this to this user who just granted permission to this app over here. And so Google will then reply with some specific details about this user. So we're going to get back some specific user details. We're going to record those user details inside of our code database. And then we're going to essentially do some stuff to uniquely identify this user in follow-up requests. And so on this box right here, I say set user ID and cookie, blah, blah, blah. But we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in the future. And then the very last step in here, I say kick user back to localhost colon 3000. That's another piece that we'll talk about later on. And at that point in time, we will consider the user to be just kind of like magically logged in. Then for any follow-up requests that the user ever makes, say we need some resources from the API or we're trying to pay some money to our application or we're trying to create a new survey, whatever it is, we're gonna make some follow-up requests and basically something magic is going to happen down here that we'll talk about later on, okay? Okay, so that's the flow in total. At this point in time, I really don't want you to worry about these last steps, okay? Please don't worry about them. You and I are gonna spend so much time talking about the intricacies of this stuff. You're, you're probably gonna hate me. You're gonna say, Steven, you're talking about this, like these last steps down here way too much because there's a lot of detail down here. So for right now, I only really wanna be concerned with this first set of steps up here. That's all I really wanna be carrying out about at this point. So at this point, just consider this to be a very high level overview.